All right, let's work another little repeating roll exercise on the banjo. This is uh, what I call the Foggy Mountain roll. And um, I, I, um, going back to the original Foggy Mountain breakdown recording, um, most of what uh, Scruggs does is this uh, index, index mode. Now and then he'll drop his thumb down for that second note so that he'll actually get all of that in there. So that's what I call the Foggy Mountain Breakdown Roll. That's what I work on um, whenever I'm starting out my students. That's one of the open string rolls that I work. And that's the way I teach Foggy Mountain Breakdown because you can always fall back to the leaving a note out. So why not go ahead and practice? Uh, putting them all in. up on Foggy Mountain Breakdown. Okay, so it takes a while to get that fast, but that's all right. But this, this exercise will work that role in uh, working positions up and down the neck, similar to what we did uh, with the other ones, working the little scale positions up and down the neck. So I'm going to start with it open. Two, one, two, one, five, two, one, five. If you need to practice that some, go ahead off the video. We'll see you in a few minutes. Bye. Okay, you back now? Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down my Cripple Creek C here. This is an index on the first fret second string and my thir third finger, I'm going to go ahead and put my third finger up on the uh, second fret first string. So I got the C there and the E there. Same roll. If we're just familiar, familiar, familiarizing ourselves with this roll, we can do it open, with a C chord on, back and forth like that. That's an exercise all unto itself. going to move up a position. This is part of a D chord up here. Same uh, same hand position, same uh, chord shape. Just up two frets. So that I'm now on three with my index finger and four with my ring finger. So there's another exercise. Open. Without even hardly realizing, because you're making some some cool like chord changes up here on the neck. Now, from here, I'm going to move up one fret, and I don't want this chord. Although it's kind of neat. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my second finger down on the fifth fret, and you can lift up your index finger if you want to. If 
you know, I, I prefer lifting it up just because that's what my hand does. That's actually a variation of a C chord. All it has is the C, I mean the, let me see, the G and the uh, E. But they're both on the fifth fret now. And I mean, this is my third finger and my second finger now. So what I did was I moved up, my second finger came in here and my first finger came off. So here we are, open. two things working here you got going from this position where you're offset to this position where you're both on the same fret and then back again so you might want to practice that by itself those two strings like so 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 far I got open Scoot that up two frets now to the seventh fret. Both fingers on the seventh fret. All I did was take this, didn't change fingers or anything. And then go back from there. another one let's add another one we were on seven both fingers on seven so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna scoot up two frets and now I'm gonna go back to my other position where my index finger is offset from my third finger so now my index finger is on six uh, um, where am I at on eight and then uh, my third finger is now on nine so I'm back to my original position that I had down here except I'm up here on eight and nine same row so, open, D, C, D, here's another G, and then back. Okay, so, that's another, and that comes into play with like your uh, Cumberland Gap. And a bunch of stuff. Sally Good. Like so. So that's another G. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna move up one fret, put my second finger back down. That's like a that's like a D seventh. So I'm back to uh 10th fret with both fingers here, second and third finger. Index, I took my index off. Now I'm going to go up to 12. Same position. So 12, 10, uh, 8 and 9, 7, 5, 3 and 4, 1 and 2. just went all the way up and down an octave. Now what's cool is beyond here you can start your the, the same positions repeat themselves that you already did down here you can now do up here past the 12th fret. So all this is just closer together obviously because the frets are so much closer together but it's the same you had an offset one here and an offset one here and up here same thing so you start here with them together on the 12th fret and then 13 and 14 uh, whatever that is 12 30 40 15 and 16 and is it 17 I don't know my frets up here 12, 14, 16, 17, 
19, 20, and 21. Now you're all the way up into your uh, uh, the highest part of Foggy Mountain Breakdown on, on the high part of that where it goes. Uh, So, start 12th fret again, offset, offset, together, together, offset. So, if we want to get really brave, we can go all the way down to the open strings and same roll with the right hand that I've been doing. fun with that it's a good good way to work that roll with your right hand and develop some speed with it so that you can then go back to your foggy mountain breakdown 